In 2017, this red swimsuit set Instagram on fire. The second you open the app, boom, post after post of the same red one piece was clogging your feed. It was a genius marketing move by Sunny Co Clothing, who kicked off the posting craze by announcing that every single person who reposted their picture would get a free red swimsuit, which led to over 334,000 likes and thousands of reposts total. But on top of being a brilliant marketing campaign, the case of the Instagram viral red swimsuit displays the incredible power Instagram holds in setting trends, and in turn, the awful way that Instagram can fuel overconsumption. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about how Instagram, an app with over 2.3 billion monthly active users that generates over 95 million photos and videos a day, has worsened our culture's disposable lifestyle, how the voyeuristic nature of social media leads us to buy things for social status, and how limiting our social media usage can help our wallets and our planet. By the way, if you are new here, I'm Kara, and I make videos on the intersection of money, media, and intentional living. Thank you so much to the people who support my channel on Patreon and buy me a coffee. I really, really appreciate it. And if you want to see more video essays like this one, go check out my video, How TikTok is Fueling Overconsumption, which you can check out after this one. Thank you also to the sponsor of today's video, whose product actually helps address some of the Instagram issues we're going to talk about in this video, and that is NordVPN. I'm so excited to partner with NordVPN because I've actually been using them for over two years now, just on my own, ever since I started to travel abroad. So context, for the past three years, I've spent two to three months a year abroad working remotely, and the first time I did this, I decided to buy NordVPN because I read about how dangerous working on public Wi-Fi can be. Since then, I use NordVPN anytime I am on public Wi-Fi, and even my parents and grandparents have used my NordVPN account anytime they go travel. Basically, a VPN makes the experience safer by encrypting your data, which gives you a safe and private access to the internet. NordVPN will hide your IP and online activity from spying eyes, which can also help reduce the amount of targeted ads that you see on platforms like Instagram, which we will talk about in a second. If you want to try NordVPN for yourself, go to my link nordvpn.com slash Kara Nicole. That's C-A-R-A-N-I-C-O-L-E. The link will also be down below. And not only do you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, but right now they're running an extra promotion where you get four months free when you use my link. That's nordvpn.com slash Karen Nicole or click the link down below. It's the best deal for Nord on the internet right now and it's risk-free, so go check it out. Okay, so first off, what is this problem of overconsumption that we're looking to solve and discuss in the first place? If you've watched my videos before, there is a very good chance you've heard me use the term overconsumption or hyperconsumption before. This is our culture's trend of leaning into the excess, whether it's with clothes or cars or computers. And I talk so much about this topic because one, I think it is an enormous problem of our times that is actively hurting our planet and our collective finances, but also because I genuinely believe we have the ability to move the needle on this issue by talking about it and creating new norms and leading by example. Because when we hear stories about climate crises or the exploitation of the global south's workforce, we often feel helpless or frustrated, right? like I know I do. But I think that by reducing our consumption and taking a hard look at the way that we are being influenced into excess, we can make a direct positive impact on these global issues. We can help buck the current stats wherein Americans consume more than our weight in products each day and where the world's richest 10% make up half the planet's carbon emissions. For reference, according to the World Inequality Database, if you make $35,000 in the US, you're technically in the top 10% of the world's wealth. So this brings us back to Instagram. I think that so much of why we've seen this rise in overconsumption is because we've simultaneously seen a rise in the way that social media drives our culture. Like 15 years ago, Instagram was not a thing. We didn't constantly know what our family and our friends and the world of celebrities were doing on a regular basis. We didn't get bombarded with pictures of extravagant vacations and luxury cars every hour when we check our phones. And we sure as hell had no idea how many gorgeous people were out there living seemingly perfect photogenic lives. That last part is especially interesting to me because I don't think we fully appreciate how many people we're aware of in the 21st century. Like according to the 1829 census, only 12 American cities had populations of over 5,000 people. 5,000! I have seen many folks who are either following more than 5,000 people or who have more than 5,000 followers. And I'm willing to bet that most of you who have used Instagram over your time on Instagram, you've probably seen over 5,000 people. And I don't think we're meant to know 
that many people. I don't think we should have the data in our brains around every new outfit worn by a singer in Korea or an actress in California or your old lab partner from eighth grade. But Instagram makes us overly aware of what others are doing with their lives, which makes it easier than ever to compare ourselves and fall into traps of trying to keep up. What are we trying to keep up? It's elusive, but I guess social acceptance, success, beauty, feeling better than others. Don't get me wrong, I do think that Instagram Instagram is an amazing platform in that it helps you document your life and your experiences. At its core, I feel like Instagram is a wholesome idea of capturing memories in a visual form. And I think it used to be closer to that in its earlier days, as partly evident by my old Instagram habits. But the problem is that visual forms are really limiting, and visual-only mediums can end up leading to comparison and aspirational living. I think about it this way. Every artistic medium comes with its own set of trade-offs. A book is great for exploring a protagonist's internal world and complex emotions, but it's limited in its ability to show you the setting. Whereas a movie can be great at capturing expansive visuals of a story, but it's more limited in its ability to explore internal worlds. For Instagram, the primarily visual form means we often are forced to trade nuance and depth for aesthetics and superficiality. This becomes an especially interesting problem when we think about how Instagram profiles are often used as almost a virtual sit-in for us as a person. The curated feed of posts on our profiles represent different aspects of ourself we're trying to convey. Whether it's to communicate that we are adventurous, that we have lots of friends, that we are fashionable or creative. Now I do think think there are the rare people who put no consideration into what they post, namely 80-something-year-old grandparents whose grandkids insisted on setting a profile up for them. But for the majority of us, we are putting some level of intent and consideration into the photos and videos we share on Instagram to communicate a certain narrative about ourselves, while simultaneously being incredibly aware of other people's narratives and the way that ours blends with theirs. In other words, we are essentially commodifying ourselves. The over-awareness of ourselves that comes from staring at this modularized virtual avatar of sorts has us turning ourselves into brands. And the consumption problem with this is that when we shift from being this individual human being to conveying these curated narratives as a digital commodity, we lean heavily on consumption as an accessory. Our clothes, our bags, our cars, even our vacations, they get blended into this conception of who we are rather than just things that we bought. I think that's why for many people, repeating outfits on Instagram is a big no-no. Because it's not just an outfit then, it's about what that repeated outfit conveys about your carefully curated self. Once you put an outfit on, on Instagram, you can't wear it anymore, wrong or right. I don't like repeating outfits on Instagram because I'm a diva. So right about now, you might be thinking, Kara, you are thinking way too deeply about this. What? Chill out. And to that I say, that's kind of what I do. That's why I have a video essay channel. It's because the people in my life are tired of me going on and on about this stuff. So I channel that energy into this now, and then you guys click on it and you're forced to deal with it instead which I thank you for. Just wanted to say that, but also I do really think it's important to think about how and why we interact with Instagram. According to Forbes, Americans spent on average more than 1300 hours on social media last year. Instagram was the second most used of the platforms and amongst Gen Z, an average of 53 minutes a day or 297 hours a year were spent on Instagram alone. With that much of our lives spent scrolling on a single app, I think it's worth reflecting on our motivations and how it may be impacting things like our spending habits. Which, as you might have guessed from just the title of this video, Instagram is definitely impacting our spending habits. According to HubSpot, quote, Instagram is consumers' second most used platform for social purchases. Instagram Shop, which debuted in 2020 and allows businesses to sell products directly from their Instagram posts, has made it easier than ever to go from scrolling to spending. And there are tons of other crazy stats we can look to to reinforce how significant a role Instagram plays into how we online shop. From the fact that 130 million users engage with shopping posts monthly, to 72% of users citing Instagram as key to purchasing decisions, to 70% of shopping enthusiasts discovering new products on Instagram. And this isn't just the Instagram shopping tab that we're talking about, which actually got removed earlier this year. I'm guessing partly because people did not love accidentally clicking on that thing. But even beyond Instagram's official shopping feature, there is very much 
and Instagram made me buy a culture. Just like in my last video on TikTok made me buy a culture, there are countless articles on Instagram made me buy it products. From hair clips to popcorn makers to levitating lamps, Instagram in my experience alongside Facebook have both been the best and the strongest at their targeted ad campaigns. As in every time I see ads on Instagram, it is like exactly my style or it's something that I had been thinking about getting and I don't know how they know so well, probably data mining. And honestly, even with me being as de-influencing to myself as I tend to be, it's still really hard to resist those targeted ads because platforms like Instagram and Facebook, both of which are owned by Meta, collect so much user data, which in turn gives them the ability to give users highly specific ads targeted just for them. Like I mentioned earlier with NordVPN, I see that as actually one of the big perks of using a VPN because it reduces one of the main ways those companies are able to collect your data for ads. But ads are only one component of the Instagram made me buy it formula. The other is the social element. Like I was talking about before, we are hyper aware of ourselves when we curate a digital persona on sites like Instagram. Even something like YouTube here, I am curating a certain version of myself, my clothes, my background, my voice, like it all comes together to convey something. And Instagram is no different. On Instagram, you're plastered against countless other people who are only showing themselves at their best, or at the very least, they're curated. There's this great quote that says, stop comparing your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. And I think that quote is perfect for anyone on Instagram because we are all posting highlight reels on there. Even the Finstas, they're curated to a degree. And look, highlight reels are not bad. Again, I think it is really neat to have a space where you can document your milestones and your happy, glamorous moments. The problem, in my opinion, comes when we naturally respond to the very unnatural experience of being constantly bombarded by other people's highlight reels. Like that didn't happen back in the 17th century, you know? If Susie the next town over had on some baller stockings and a dope frock, I wouldn't have any clue. I wouldn't know in real time as I was looking through my cabinet of lame frocks that Susie has cool frocks and now I want cool frocks and why can't I just buy some cool frocks now? Saying frocks over and over. I hope I don't get demonetized. It makes sense that these digital highlight reels that are accessible 24 seven and constantly growing lead us into comparison, into not feeling adequate with our bodies, our lifestyle, our house, our clothes. It's part of why I don't have Instagram on my phone these days. I have an account and every like three to four weeks, I'll check in on it on my desktop. But other than that, I don't use it because I just feel like comparison is inevitable on there. And it doesn't feel good, guys. That's the bottom line. And all that comparison makes it that much easier to fall into things like lifestyle inflation or living beyond our means. Every time we refuse to outfit repeat means more money that's being drained away from our bank account. And every time we buy some cool gadget or accessory we saw on an Instagram targeted ad means more hours we are now stuck at a job in order to even afford those things. They say that comparison is the thief of joy, but I think to add to that, comparison can also be the thief of money. Glossy pictures can hide a lot whether it's products that aren't what they live up to be or people who are pretending to be a lot richer online than they really are. For me, what's really helped is to take a step back from engaging with social media. It doesn't mean never using it, but just not letting it be too large a part of your routine. I also think doing things like turning off your Instagram notifications, only following people you know rather than celebrities and brands, and then starting things like gratitude journaling can really help reset your relationship with your spending on Instagram. Because Instagram is fueled overconsumption. And it's not just a matter of buying things that we don't need, but it's getting rid of those things so that we can replace them with newer, shinier things the second a new trend comes along. That kind of spending and comparing ourselves to others isn't sustainable for our wallets or our planet. That being said, I am incredibly encouraged by the conversations people seem to be having around social media usage and overconsumption. Honestly, the comments in these videos make me feel really hopeful for the future because I can see that people are taking a step back and thinking about their spending habits and that way that the media has kind of influenced them to always want more and buy more. I think we're all starting to realize that our lifestyles need some adjusting and that things like Instagram might not 
really play a significant role in that future lifestyle. But what do you think? Has Instagram ever influenced you to buy something? Do you feel like Instagram is to blame in any of this or shouldn't even be brought up in the conversation in the first place? Let me know in the comments below and what you'd like to see me cover next. If you wanna see another video essay like this, go check out how TikTok is fueling overconsumption or my video, how FOMO culture is keeping you poor. Both of the links are down below if you're interested. Thank you so much to the patrons on Patreon and those who donate on Buy Me A Coffee for supporting this channel. Don't forget to check out my NordVPN link down below as well. And thank you so much NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.